Why swimming is like starting an Amazon business. I suppose you could actually say why is sport like running a business you could generalize it but obviously given my circumstances I swim and I run an Amazon business. Now I love a good analogy and if you don't I would say scroll on because this is analogy time. It's also not going to be like my usual content giving tips and tricks. Uh, this is more discussing what I've learned in swimming and how I've applied it to my business. The first thing is figuring out why you actually want to do this, uh, whether it be the business or the swimming or any sport. Are you doing it for a bit of fun? Do you just want to get a little bit healthier? Do you want to make some money on the side? Are you super serious about it? And this is something to get clear on right from the beginning. Another reason why swimming is like running a business is the progressive nature of it all, really. Uh, I don't know about you, but our leisure centre, we have a slow lane, a medium lane and a fast lane. And I started in the slow lane. I guess that's got something to do with my own thoughts about myself. And I quickly moved up to the medium lane because I realised the slow lane is actually just for the people who don't want to get their hair wet. So I moved to the medium lane and that's kind of where I stayed for a really long time. People were nice there, life was great, I could kind of do my own thing. Obviously I was faster than some people and slower than some people which obviously had a rate of, well had an impact on my rate of swimming. And you could say the same for business, right? It depends on who you're with and who's in your pool, so to speak. If you're surrounding yourself with slow players or medium players, you can only expect yourself to grow at that rate. Which is fine because again, going back to what you've decided for your business or your swimming is sort of dictating what you do with it, right? But then there's the fast lane. Now I mentioned in a previous video there was a story I was going to tell you and I guess now's the time. So a couple of days ago I realized swimming in the medium lane, I was kind of just chasing people um, and getting in their way and making them get out of my way and it just wasn't very comfortable because I'm not the kind of person that wants to sort of intimidate someone out of my way. So on Saturday I thought, I'm going to give it a go, I'm going to put myself in the fast lane. I've kind of dabbled in the fast lane a little bit, you know, when it was quiet and the medium lane was a little bit busy. So I moved over to the fast lane, but Saturday I decided I'm going to do it from the beginning. I get there, there's one person, I'm like, great, this is a perfect start. So I sit down and I put my legs in the water and I go to get my goggles on, as you do. Next thing I turn around, there's these four big guys and by big guys I mean super sporty you can see they're not swimming in the medium lane kind of guys so I get into the fast lane put my legs in go to put my goggles on and I turn around and these four big guys come in and by big guys I don't mean huge although they were I mean you can see they're not medium lane swimmers they're fast lane swimmers and probably fast fast lane swimmers but I've committed now, so I get in and I start swimming as fast as my little arms and legs can take. I get out of their way and it feels like a really disjointed effort. I feel like after the 48 minutes, I wasn't quite sure what I did with my swimming. I'm not sure I actually achieved much. So I start thinking, well, maybe I got into the fast lane a bit prematurely. Maybe I should go back to the medium lane. So I get out the pool, get myself dressed and go to the sitting area where you put your shoes on. And this one guy comes up to me, he's a regular, I've seen him around, he's really nice, he's a fast lane swimmer, and he says to me, you should stay in the fast lane, you're pretty good. And that's pretty much what my face did. So I was like, really? He goes, yeah, you're doing great, I think you should stay in the fast lane. Which brings me to my next analogy is, don't get in your head about stuff. I was convinced the fast lane wasn't for me, I was convinced these people didn't want me there. And I guess we have those thoughts in business, don't we? We're convinced that we're not a big player. We're convinced we're not big enough to have any clout, whatever the case may be. That one little conversation with that guy completely changed my outlook. And it reminded me to stop using this too much and just start going with the flow. The next one is complementary sports or complementary businesses. So as I've mentioned in a previous video, I've started the couch to 5k. Now I've started at the beginning, I would say I'm a slow lane runner if you want to call it that or a medium lane runner, I wouldn't even consider myself a runner to be fair, but I've done it a couple of weeks following the process as you do and I 
honestly think that just those two weeks of running, which bear in mind swimming cardio is different to running cardio. I was super out of breath for running. I very rarely get out of breath for swimming. So you can't even say that the swimming helped the running, but I think the running helped the swimming because being in that fast lane, it made me realize that I have a lot more strength. Don't know where it came from, but I'm gonna chalk it up to running. So in business, yes, it's great to niche down and do all those things, but I'm talking complementary businesses. So if you're doing, let's say Amazon FBA, I'm just using that as an example. What about those returns or those really bulky items or when a listing gets taken away on Amazon, why not consider something like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Vinted? These are things that can complement your business and help you grow. Now I have two more points before I'll let you scroll on by. The next point is being consistent, right? And I think you can all agree that if you're gonna do a sport or anything, whether it be swimming or running or tennis, whatever is your bag, you're gonna need to do it somewhat regularly or you're gonna lose the gains that you made. Your body's gonna forget the fitness, your body's gonna forget the muscle memory. And that's the same in business. Again, I'm gonna use Amazon FBA, but if you take an example of sourcing, you can source one week and do a really great job and send those products in, but you need to carry on sourcing for the following week and the following week and the following week or your sales are just going to dip. So you need to remain consistent and whatever consistent means to you, whether it's sourcing once a week, every day, every night, just constantly turning the wheel even when you don't feel like it. It's the same with swimming. Nine times out of ten, I wake up in the morning and I think, I don't want to. I just don't want to. I would rather lie in a little bit longer they get myself dressed, go to the pool, especially now when the weather's cold. It's just one of those things, right? But it's mind over mattress, one of the guys said to me, and that's essentially what it is when you run your own business. Before I get on to the last step, if you're getting any value from this, if, if this analogy hits home in any way, I would love it if you could press all the buttons, if you're on TikTok or like and subscribe, if you're on YouTube, wherever you're watching this, I'd really appreciate it. On to the last point. The last point is have a rest day. Now this is something I didn't think about initially obviously I could only get to the pool a certain amount of times during the week so obviously I had rest days but since I started the couch to 5k that's one of the things they sort of mention quite a bit is make sure you have a rest day in between especially when you're starting out and I think it's the same for business because we tend to have this whole hustle culture at the moment which I'm not quite sure is always the best culture to buy into I mean yes it's great you know to churn through training sessions or turn through hours and hours of sourcing but I've found and correct me if I'm wrong I've found that when you just take even if it's a couple of hours but if you have a day to just not do your business and just be yourself and enjoy time with your family you come back a lot more rested and a lot more determined and I think most athletes, I mean, I don't know many athletes, but I'm sure most athletes would say that there comes a point where you need a rest day. So those are my tips. Let me know what you think in the comments below.